Hey Floss Tube. It has been probably closer to three weeks instead of two weeks like I said it would be. I am still fighting the aftermath of COVID. So there's still a bit of congestion. There's still a slight cough. I finally gave up and went to the doctor and they gave me an in I know buddy. They gave me um, some cough medicine and an inhaler and did check chest x-rays and all that stuff. But I'm here. All is well. Come on up here. Oh. So all is well. And we're going to do a bit of a different video today. It's probably going to be a little long, which I personally really enjoy a nice long video. So hopefully you'll be okay with that. I'm going to do a quasi whip parade, a view of 2023, where we've been and where we're going. So this is every whip that I've touched and this is every whip that I would like to touch. This isn't all of my whips uh, because that's a lot. That's, that's we're just making ourselves comfortable right in mom's lap. We haven't been in my lap all day, but now this is where we wanna be. Okay, this is what we're doing. <laughs> uh, to start off though, last time I said that I was doing a giveaway pairing up with Mad for Minders and lots of great comments and I actually drew a winner right before I got started and that winner is Anita Schwab. Uh, she commented, great video. Thanks for sharing. Favorite minder is lobster. So Anita, if this is you, you have won. I will comment on your comment. And um, I also requested to follow your account on Instagram. So I'll, I'll get in touch with you and hook you up with Mad for Minders and they'll get you your two free minders. So hopefully you, if you haven't already purchased some from them, I know there's two more that you absolutely will love and we'll get those added to your way. I mean, we are just... You got some things you need to say, buddy? Hmm? Well, I mean, y'all complain when Buster doesn't show up in a video, so... <laughs> I guess one where he's just demanding to be the center of attention won't be that big of a deal, old man. Okay, um, I did fairly well with No Spend July. I know. I did make, I made one purchase. I'm telling you, COVID fog is also a real thing where you're just like, you're going somewhere with a thought and then you're like, wait, what was I saying? Um, <clears throat> I made a purchase from Mad for Minders and I also uh, grabbed this chart. I needed, um, I needed a few threads for a chart. I know I said I wasn't going to do that and I tossed this in my, in my cart. Considering all of the things I almost bought this month, a couple of threads and this chart is doing pretty, pretty good. So I, I mean, it's a giant rabbit that's about to destroy that homestead and possibly stomp on the deer and the sheep. I, I needed this. I'll do it without pink, but I will stitch this one day. I also received a gift. Um, Laura Duet, a Modern Mozart serial stitcher, however you know her, sent me an extremely sweet card. <clears throat> and she stitched this for me. She stitched me a derpy cow. And this is the cow that me and her and Megan all fell in love with at Vicki Jeanette's house. And this is on a sampler that she has that's charted. 
<clears throat> and she has it hanging in her guest bedroom, one of them. And I mean, look at that guy. So I actually have a stuffed with walnut shells. I can tell it's so nice. I actually have a dough ball in my dining room <clears throat> and somehow it's entirely filled with gifted stitching and it just, it brings me a lot of joy. <clears throat> Hopefully we're going to get through this. This is where I've been. So we're going to start here and we're going to go through every single piece that I have stitched on so far this year. <clears throat> Some of these may get pulled out again. We'll see. This is Jane Hopkins that I started at the end of 2022 and let it carry over into 2023. This is one I really want to touch again this year. We'll see if I'm able to. But this is where I got to on it. So beautiful. And I am stitching this on a mystery. Aha! Up in the Attic 36 Count by Fox and Rabbit. Um, I saw <clears throat> a couple of people start this recently and it's made me want to pull mine out. It's funny how that works. I guess Buster's just going to sit here and purr through the whole video. Is that the plan, buddy? <clears throat> Getting linen stuck in zippers. Not what we want to do. <clears throat> Whoops. The next piece that I pulled out is tombstone spots by the Primitive Needle. I'm stitching this with Michelle Cozy Egg and we are both doing this on a piece of Fiber on a Whim Affogato. <clears throat> this is a working copy of the cover because this is a rare out of print chart. love this piece. I may not pull this one back out again this year. I know Michelle has worked on hers recently, but I, it's one of those I kind of love so much. I'm not ready to finish it anytime soon. <clears throat> Doing this in all of the called for threads, which are really like earthy greens and it's really nice. The next one is one that I started for Brenda's birthday. <clears throat> A lot of us started this for Brenda's birthday. This is the Scarlet Houses. Martha Evans, I'm doing this on a piece of Seraphim Dusty Road. This is the chart. Doing this in the called for threads. I'm doing it in the DMC threads. Man, that's pretty. This is what's bad about getting out pieces again is you're like, oh, I should really pull that out and work on it. When I have this entire stack over here of things that I've said the exact same thing about, I should really get that out and work on that. <clears throat> Buster's been really needy lately. In fact, before Jim um, headed out just a few minutes ago, he had been up with him all day as Jim was working from home. And uh, Jim said, he's really needy. He wants to be right with you. He's followed me around. So he's probably gonna be right there with you. And I was like, okay. That is okay. This is my only finish of 2023. I've got to turn this into a little pillow. It's a spell of the moon. 
by Blackbird Designs. And I did this on a piece of Picture This Plus Gingerbread with the coffer threads. I think I changed the, the yellow for the moon. And of course, I do not remember what thread I changed it to off the top of my head. And the next thing I worked on is a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger by the Scarlet Letter. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? It's this piece. It's full coverage. It's a wonderful chart. Do not be intimidated by it. If you want to stitch it, just get you one and jump in. It is a lot of colors. <clears throat> And this is where I got to. So pretty. And it will fill up this whole, this whole piece of linen with about the border that is already on there. Just purring. Just happy to be here. I was watching um, uh, the museum stitcher earlier and her cat made a little debut and you know, I love a good cat in a video. This is the piece that I started while in Phoenix at the attic. This is the Mrs. Flossie Madeline Deleste. And this is the one I was doing on Fox and Rabbit Dirt Track with threads that I pulled there at the attic. So, using these threads, you can tell some of them I have not unwound and used yet. <clears throat> I definitely need to do some more on this so I can cut off the rest of this and use it for something else. No, not very far on this. <clears throat> I don't even have this one in a project bag. It's just, just in the, in the chart. Next one I worked on also in Phoenix. This was the piece that I worked on the most there. This is Riley Harbor by Kathy Barrick. Um, Olivia with Hillside Rookery just kitted, uh, made kits of this on her site in the silk, the MPI silks, but mine is in the DMC. I love this. Always reminds me of going up to Salem or going up to um, New Hampshire. In fact, this may be a piece that goes with me uh, when we go back up to New Hampshire in October. And then Jim and I are spending a few days in Maine for our 10 year wedding anniversary. So if you live near Portland, Maine, and have any must-dos, comment those down below because we are already, you know, making some plans as to what we want to do in the, the days that we have in Maine. I've pulled this piece out several times this year. This is my Weaver's Tapestry Band Sampler. It will get pulled out again this year because I'm trying to work my way towards a finish would be so nice to finish this. But I think these are the sections that I've got done this year. Doing this on a piece of Picture This Plus Bramble with a DMC variegated thread called Espresso. And that is DMC 4000. If you really like that chart, it's a free chart. 
You can get it um, if you Google Magical525. She has a blog and she has several free charts and that is one of them. Weaver's Tapestry Band Sampler. <clears throat> I took this piece with me when I went to St. Louis and New Hampshire. And this is, I think it's gotten popular again since I showed it because I saw that um, Dime to Stitch in Virginia Beach, I saw them post on their Instagram. If you're looking for this, we have it back in stock. So it's the, it's an exclusive chart for them. So you have to call Dime to Stitch in Virginia Beach to get this chart. And they do still have it and can get more. I am stitching this with color, um, classic color works, sticks and twigs on a piece of Picture This Plus Wren. And yeah, I have not gotten super far, but I got most of this done this year. It's a nice travel piece because you only have to bring the one color. You don't have to keep switching out threads. And then I came back, got made my way home, and had COVID. So I pulled out this piece. This is Sarcy Girls. She offered this free in 2020. This is the 2020 pandemic sampler. <clears throat> Print, cover sheet. I dyed a piece of fabric myself and pretty much stitched in that whole house. <laughs> it's the house that COVID built. So I'll get there. I love this piece. I'm excited to have it on the wall one day. Just a furry. We like to be with you, and if you're talking, we think you're talking to us, I think. So we like that. It's very soothing. Okay, next up, I started a piece. I uh, started this with several friends, uh, one of them being Olivia, who's already finished hers. She has this kitted in her shop. This is Enchanted by Carriage House Samplings. I am doing this version. And as I discussed last time, I just reiterated to myself that I don't like stitching with silks. Did not get very far. This is a piece of linen that's origin and name and dyer is a mystery to me. I didn't have it labeled in my stash. I would like to finish this this year and I think that's doable. It's not that big of a piece because they're already talking about what deer that we would work on together next. Thankfully, I think the one that they're thinking of is one I already have started. So maybe if they start that before I finish this, they'll get to where I am and we'll be even Stevens again. <clears throat> uh, this next piece, I started with uh, Kim Parda. This is the one that I did the conversion for, and I listed the link for the conversion that I did on my last video. And you can get this chart through 1884 Stitchery, the recharted version that's so much better. My version adds in much more orange. <clears throat> It will change the color of the house. It will make the girl's dress blue. And I'm doing this on a piece of Victorian Motto Shadows.
<clears throat> Only one more, and well, two more, and then we're moving into what I have yet to do this year, what I would like to work on, what I would like to start. And considering we're already just a little over halfway through the year, there's no way, there's no way I'm getting to all of this. Emily likes to bite off more than she can chew. This is my Clouds Factory Haunted House. I pulled a bunch of colors from Stash and I'm making some changes as I go. Yeah. <clears throat> and I did not put the threads for Hannah Lancaster back in there. They're laying here in front of me. I got a lot done on this this time. And I had it out last. Doing some edits as I go, like I changed the cat, made it less cutesy, taking off a lot of the cutesy things. I mean, it's still really bright colors and crazy, but not too crazy. I mean, you guys have just got to see the cuteness. Just trying to take a nap next to mom. My stomach is growling. I didn't eat a very big lunch. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull from down here next. I've been watching a lot of different floss tubers and several of them are doing heaven and earth designs pieces or full coverage. This is probably, this is my oldest whip. And I, I didn't count it as a whip for a long time because I put it in the box under the bed because <clears throat> I thought I didn't like full coverage. It wasn't for me. However, I want to give it another go because I love this image so much. I've done a little over three pages and this is <laughs> only 64 pages. This is altered and the artwork is by Anne Yvonne Gilbert. I checked and this is still a chart that you can get on Heaven and Earth Designs website. I, I mean, I've lost my mind, but you know, maybe if I do a couple of pages a year, it'll be done before I die. This is where I am. And you can see, I mean, it's really well charted. That looks so good. I, one of the things I did to try to make me want to work on this is I ordered a custom needle minder from Mad for Minders of this image, <clears throat> of this image. So I'll have it to use when I'm working on this and I should put it in a bag I actually enjoy right now. It's in a hefty Ziploc bag. So I'll put this in a bag that I enjoy and I'll put the flosses in a way that is workable and maybe I'll get a little bit done every now and then, but I, I want to give this another try. I love it. I love that image. Oh, I didn't show you the one that I'm almost done with. I'm not going to take it off the Q-snap because I actually want when I have a final finish and I may go ahead and get it framed and then show you the finish. I'm just not putting stuff back. Okay, put that there. This is what I'm currently working on. 
I literally just have to finish this girl and I have to work on the tree and there's a few more sheep in the ground and I'm done. Oh, and I will say there are some errors on this chart as far as what colors, if you want it to look like the cover, the swans are all charted to be yellow and then they're this, they're this color on the chart. Um, I also fixed this fine, although I, I think that that was a original uh, little girl issue, but I made it look the way I wanted it to look. Um, but both of these bushes, there's one on the other side, is yellow on the front of the chart. And they're charted in different colors on the actual chart. So I, I'm going to, it bothers me, I'm going to unpick my orange one and make it yellow because I want, it's so many other things mirror in this chart. I don't know, but be aware. There, there are some color discrepancies. All right, buddy, can I scoot you over just a little bit? Hmm? No, you don't want to scoot? Oh. 15 guys, we're 15. Okay. Let's put these here. Straighten this. He's still pissed. <laughs> How dare you move me? just missing. These are all things I would like to work on. Oh, Emily. This I want to finish. I want to finish this for my niece Ansley because she and her husband moved into their first little starter home and her entire house is orange. Like she loves burnt orange. So I would like to finish this ink circles piece and frame it up and give it to her. All right, because she's just a little hippie and I think she would love it. So I'm putting this one in the to be worked on soon and finished stack. I'm actually gonna put that in the basket here. Oh, I didn't show you this one. I'm telling you, my brain, this is another one that I've worked on this year. This is the one I started for the, the French sal with Jesse Marie. I'm not going to take this out. This is Riflet Cessois uh, poppies in French. And I think this is Dusty Road. I did very little, <laughs> oh, so little, but that is stitching I did this year. I put it in this tiny little bag that was given to me at the attic that's not really big enough for it. I think it's for like notions and threads, but I never use extra bags for that. So, ah, uh, just scattered. Put the threads back in there. The threads almost don't fit because there's so many threads for this little tiny piece. And it really stuffs this bag full. Okay, this is one I want to work on because I started it forever ago for my sister because I think she would really like it. And it's the Little House Needleworks ABC Sampler series. And I was going to stitch them all together for her. She loves that like classic primitive um, look and she loves fall colors so I was trying to do it yeah I've barely done anything tragic tragic so I've got to pull this out and get a couple more blocks done on it to figure out where I'm going to put stuff. 
This one has got to be finished because I've done so much on it. This is Red Deer by GGR. I'm doing this on a piece of Lakeside Linen's Vintage Cedar Plank, which you can't find, so apologies. I've done so much on this. Doing it with all the called for gassed threads and it's just beautiful. But when you've got so many different things going and so many things that you love, you know, it's hard. This is one that I started that I just really want to get some more stitches in on. This is Jane Baxter. This is the country sampler conversion of colors. Um, you can get it from them, country sampler in Spring Green, Wisconsin. They will sell you these colors. Doing this on a piece of Lakeside Vintage Maple Sugar. And that's how far I've gotten. It's a purple turkey. Everybody needs a purple turkey. This one I want to finish. I put it in the stack because I love the colors. I want to see it done and on my wall. It's the call for colors with the exception of I made the blue bluer, I think. I think this is Lakeside. I think this is Vintage Exemplar. It's so pretty. This is one of the few um, quilted bags that I made myself and I just love it. My work, it's very stressful at the moment. A lot more responsibility continues to be put on my plate, which I'm not saying no to, but I'm just wrapping my head around it as I go. And we are moving into our new building in less than a month. On the upside, that means I get my home office back completely as a sewing room, which means I could get my sewing machine back out. We'll see. <clears throat> I love this piece. I would like to touch it again. Put some more stitches in. This is Jane Hardy by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Uh, doing this on a piece of, I think this is also like side. I wonder, the ones that I really, really love, I tend to be like, that's like side worthy. <laughs> uh, this is, I think this is vintage buttercream. thought I had more done on this. I guess I don't. And I'll have plenty of, of this fabric left to do another small sampler on. <clears throat> the next one is one that I started, I'm telling you, it's a pretty zipper, but it doesn't work that well. Uh, one that I started last year with my 40 starts, 
I got really wrapped up in it. I recharted the verse because I don't like religious verses. I put part of Van Morrison's uh, Into the Mystic lyrics on this. As anything that I rechart, it is available. Um, it's on my Google Drive. I keep a link to it on my Instagram link tree and it's accessible for anyone. I also have a link on there to my Venmo. So if anyone uses something that I've charted, it's free, but if you use it and you go, I want to give Emily a little something for this, I'm also not saying no. So here you can see I really focused on getting some of the verse in, doing this on a piece of, uh, I believe this is Silk Weaver Sand Dune. Definitely want to get some more in on this. I had to make some other chart changes to make that verse work, um, but I also alluded to or showed that in my rechart. This guy. This is one I just want to work on again because I love it. This is Caroline Amelia Trowell. I'm doing this on a piece of fiber on a whim latte. I love a quirky sampler. Doing this with the call for colors. I made my way all the way across It's so beautiful. Man, it's a good one. I actually, there's a similar, not really similar, kind of, mm, that I'll hopefully show next time because I told you all that I was going to buy the Jane Moore sampler to start on for Lauren, the New Hampshire Stitchers Bap to School Sal. If you want to know more about that, go watch her video. Um, but I, that's the Bap that I'm starting for the Bap to School Sal. But I also found another chart that I felt like I really needed that's going to come with it. It's in my chart. We're waiting for August so I can do better with my No by July. Uh, this one was started for Ellen Reed's birthday one year. Um, Brenda and Laura have been talking about this one recently. I think maybe one of them has started it and one of them hasn't, or maybe both of them have not. This is a Welsh sampler. The verse is completely in Welsh. I plan on doing it exactly as charted. And I am doing it exactly as charted. And not sure the fabric that I'm doing this on. But I have a good bit done. So I would like to get back to this. Those birds are complex. There is some confetti snuck in in those birds. So be aware. But they are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So Laura, Brenda, when you guys decide to pull the trigger, let me know. I'll get this one out and I'll work on it with you. Am I bothering you? Let you stretch those toes out. Oh my gosh, you're adorable. There we go what you guys really want to see. Olivia just finished this. I have a sad start on it, but her finish makes me want to work on mine. Sad. 
Wow, I don't even have insides of those flowers. Man, that's sad. This has got to be, yes, this is a silk weaver in the color Driftwood. Sad. It's just sad. <clears throat> okay, so I have a spreadsheet that like has all of my whips from oldest to current and the date that I started them and the fabric that I started them on. So I have all of that. So the next few are my four oldest samplers, like reproduction samplers. And I've decided that I want to touch them before the year is up. Maybe for sampler September, maybe just sometime. <clears throat> this one is an Emptage. This is a Milady's Needle. There is a model of this at the attic that's breathtaking. So pretty. I'm doing this, I think it's DMC. I dyed this piece of fabric. It's, it's way darker than the called for, but I really like it. It's subtle and I just think it's, cause it's kind of a, a piece about grief and I think it makes it really moody. I hope you can hear him purring. Sweet baby boy. Dharma's around. She's, oh, gracious. She, um, she likes to sleep up in our bedroom during the day. So we have, um, like blackout shades, curtains up there. And she loves how dark it is. This is Ann Thomas from Hands Across the Sea. Also one of my older pieces. I am doing this on... You know what? I could look. I have my spreadsheet right here. Because this is a beautiful linen. And I know you guys are going to want to know what it is. Oh, I dyed this. <laughs> oh, it's Marianne Bournes that is on the other one. This one I dyed um, because I wanted, I was think I was working on it for something else. And then I was like, this is perfect for this. It's so pretty. And that one over one does not play. So... This is Ann Thomas. I'm sitting here thinking about what I want for dinner. That's the level of hungry I am. Maybe some pasta, some marinara sauce, mix up some ricotta cheese. This is Sarah Stewart Hardman. So pretty. So I am doing this one. And the more I work on it, the more I like it better than Ann Rayner, which is out of print, that looks like this one. 
<clears throat> it's actually kind of a small piece. Here's the border, goes all the way around. I'm doing this on a limited edition piece of color and cotton. Time to get some more work in on this, for sure. <laughs> Go in. Yeah, this came in, this fabric came in a coloring cotton Halloween box that I, I got one year. Jim's gonna come home, there's project bags everywhere and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is Marianne Bournes. This is the one that the fabric just, I love it so much. And this is color and cotton Havana. Look at you. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's stretching. Oh my goodness, look at how cute you are. Look at that belly. Oh, you're such a ham. This is Marianne Bourne's Hands Across the Sea Samplers. This is the first uh, piece I think that she ever charted. I started this with a bunch of people years ago and we called it the Jungle Igloo Sal. And this is how very little I have done on it. I mean, are you just being the cutest ever? Definitely need some love. But look at this fabric. I mean, man, that is nice. Still going. Inching in on almost an hour. I saw someone finish this one and that's how it made it into the basket. This is Needlework Presses, Jane Tyndall. I also saw this at Vicki's house. I recharted the verse and where is it? I have in here a Thoreau quote, live in each season as it passes, breathe the air, drink the drink, taste the fruit, and resign yourself to the influence of the earth. Of which I have started none of. <laughs> oh, oh wow, I did the border, look at me go. And I started in on the grass. That is weird for me. Who, who knows what past Emily was thinking? And this is on a piece of picture, this plus legacy. I mean, to be a house cat. Living the life, right, buddy? This is my oldest Halloween whip. Or what I consider it, a Halloween whip. This is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain by Kathy Barrick. This October, it's gonna get some love. I'm doing this on a piece of Picture This Plus Shale with mostly the call for threads. Mostly. I don't know why. Like some of my, like this is a older piece. Why do I have that big of a margin? What, what was going on in my head? But that's where I am. I think I also saw Olivia pull hers out of this the other day. Lovely. It's a huge piece of fabric. 
that I totally just wasted part of. Whatever. These are also October plans. I started this one last year. This is on, I'm doing it on a piece of Pictures Plus Bramble. This is Halloween Eve by Blackboard Designs. When I worked on it last year, all I got done was words. I really want to get into the thick of it. want to be able to stitch some things that's more fun. <sighs> this is Haunted House Sampler by Twin Peak Primitives. Do not put your nails in the couch. You know better than that. Uh, I did a color switch up on this to over dyed threads. Um, I do not think I have that listed anywhere, but I would be open to sharing it if anybody wanted it. This is on a piece of Weeks Dye Works Gray. Um, while I have this fabric out, I want to touch on that really quickly. I've been noticing um, <clears throat> a couple of floss tubers talking about weak dye works lately and, and some problematic things with them. And then one floss tuber said specifically that until they were willing to take things like uh, Confederate Gray out of their color listing, you know, it wasn't really a company they wanted to buy from. Just, if anybody's watching this, they have taken it out of their color listing. This was an issue that, uh, like, stitchers, like, brought up and brought to their attention years ago. Like, 2020, 2021, maybe. And they have removed it. Um, they hurt us, and they took it out. Now, you're probably still getting threads and fabric from some places that are marked as Confederate Gray because people aren't getting like rid of, like they're not gonna throw out something. <clears throat> like I think I have a piece in my stash that's still called that. But if you go on the Weeks Dye Works website and you go on their order sheet for threads, for linens, for anything where that color line existed, it's no longer called that. It's gray. And I think the last update that I saw, because I looked into it, was I think that sheet was updated March of this year and it's it's that name. So they hurt us. <laughs> they also hurt us previously because I, for the longest time I didn't like Weeks Dye Works fabrics because I didn't like the base linen. I felt like it was too, uh, it wasn't as sturdy as I like my linen to be because I tug on it a lot as I maneuver it in my Q-snap but now you can get Zweigart based. So there's that. This piece I'm getting back to for sure in October. In fact, I have another piece behind me that I'm gonna start <clears throat> on Weeks Gray Linen because it is a gorgeous neutral. In fact, let's start with that. This is, as you can see, you know, this is an old piece. It's still labeled as that, but it's no longer what Weeks calls it. This is what I'm going to put my vanity sampler on. I <clears throat> got the conversion from Cam the Stitcher, and then I went a different way with it. So I am using three DMC that she converted to, and then I changed everything else. 
So mine's going to be a lot of like kind of witchy greens and purples and a blue. In fact, these two purples are the same symbol, but there's a lot of that symbol used in this chart. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth with them and get both of those purples in there. So I'm pretty excited about getting this one started on Weeks Gray. It's good stuff. Now if we could only get Weeks to change their, um, their floss tags so that they're bigger and I don't have to put my my binder ring through the same part that the thread goes through. <laughs> that That's what I need now, Weeks. Um, this one, I'm ashamed to show this. I have had this in my floss tube basket for a couple of years. I'm getting it started and finished in the next couple of months. Started and finished because I want to pass this chart on because this chart was passed to me. This chart started with Michelle Bendy and then went to several other people, including Ellen Reed and Megan Hibberts. And I'm supposed to stitch it and pass it to somebody else. I'm a terrible person to include in stuff like this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to get this stitched up and I'm going to squish my motifs together so that it's not so sparse. And then I'm going to pass this on within the next couple of months. In fact, today I pulled a scrap of fabric. I have a piece of Fox and Rabbit Winter Wren and I pulled some random threads that I'm going to use and I'm going to get this stitched up and I'm going to pass it to somebody and then it will keep on rolling. So here we go. This I just recently showed. This is Ellen Harrison. Uh, we have to figure out when we're starting this one. Ellen Harrison, the big ass deer sal. Uh, with my conversion to color and cotton threads, which you can call color and cotton and ask for. And getting this started. This year maybe? You, you ladies just tell me. I'm literally just waiting on somebody to tell me that they're ready to go. And if you're planning on doing that with us, uh, please tell me down in the comments below. And like, if you need, like, I'll have all my stuff together on this date. Let me know that because that would be helpful for me to know. I've been tossing around the idea of this being a New Year's Day start. This chart was passed to me. This is Jane Atkinson by the Scarlet Letter. It's one of my favorite charts ever. I have all the DMC in here. None of it has been put on drops. And I have a piece of giant piece of unlabeled fabric. I'm 99% sure this is Tobias, which I think is by Seraphim. Dropping threads. Yes, Seraphim 36 count Tobias linen. Because I got that from Hobby House, so the little bag is still in here. This may be my New Year's Day start. Maybe if I, oh, paper cut. Maybe if I get some of the stuff done I wanna get done, 
treat myself to that. And these are a couple that I might start, but I'm not sure. I've showed these recently. I got these at the attic this year. This is Emily Calwar. This is a gift from Laura Duet. I have the chart or the, the threads in there. And I have a piece of Dusty Road Seraphim Linen all ready to go. And this bag was so perfect for this, it's already in there. And then this is also an all kitted up possibility for a start. Uh, in fact, I need to pull these out because I'm not gonna use these. I'm going to use a fabric that I bought from Coloring Cotton. So I have a fabric upstairs from Coloring Cotton. It's a limited edition. It looks very similar to this background, only a little bit more modeled. This is Emily in Greenaway from Hands Across the Sea. I have the DMC for her, and she's in this beautiful green bag. The only other one that I'm touching and working on this year that I haven't shown is Jane Moore that I'm going to start on September 1st for my Foss Tube anniversary and for the Back to School South. It's right here. And that's an hour's worth of me going through tons and tons of charts and fabrics. That was a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you love it. Um, the winner uh, just needs to contact me and I will get your information to Mad for Minders. And hopefully I will see you guys again. I'm going to try to be more regular every two to three weeks rather than once a month. So we're going to shoot for that. And as soon as I finish this, I plan on, as long as there's a sale going on at Michael's, taking this to the framers. And I hope the next time you see it, it's finished and framed. Because I'm thinking I'm finishing this within days. That's my plan. All right. You guys root me on. That's the plan. I will see you next time.